Hello, trig class. So this lesson is 8.1. 8.1 is very long, uh, so we're going to see several videos. This is part one. Okay, so part one. Uh, I'm only going to do the first three pages of the notes because this section, it's very, very important conceptually to understand what's going on. And if you understand conceptually what's going on, then the rest is going to make sense to you. So first, let's look at the graph of sine. If we look at the graph of sine, you know, it has some really nice features. For instance, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Remember, do domain is your width. And the range goes from negative 1 to 1. Okay, and all values in between, no problems. Uh, is this a function? It is a function. So the answer is yes. And the reason is because it uh, does not flunk the um, vertical line test, meaning I can put a vertical line anywhere, and it only hits my graph once. Uh, so, you know, it's fine that way, and also it's continuous. So, we can say that about it. Um, Alright, but if you want to take the inverse of one of these trig functions, you have to make it one-to-one. -one. And this is where the original sine graph is a problem. Okay, the original sine graph is not one-to-one -one because it flunks what's called the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test says if it touches at more than one point, do you guys see where I put the X's, then that's not good. That means that it is it flunks the horizontal line test and it touches more than once. Okay, so that means, you know, at that Y value, for instance, when Y equals one half, we see it touched one, two, three, four, and that's just on the window that we saw. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase that highlighter and those X's um, and uh, show you what we can do. So we have to be quite clever. And to be quite clever, we have to make this one-to-one. -one. So to make it one-to-one, -one, what we're going to do here is, is limit the graph of sine. Okay, when you limit the graph of sine, you want one quadrant where the values are positive and one quadrant where the values are negative. The values are positive from 0 to pi over 2. This is quadrant number 1. And then they're negative where I just restricted that graph right here. So that's why I'm restricting it. This is quadrant number 4. This is a negative pi over 2. Okay, so I restricted the graph of sine made it one to one and I made sure that I had one quadrant that was positive and one quadrant that's negative. So if this helps you see what I'm talking about, you know, from zero to pi over two is quadrant one, sine's positive there. And then from zero to negative pi over two, this is quadrant four, sine is negative here. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about, so that way you know quadrant one, quadrant four. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw the restricted graph of the, the, the new restricted graph of sine of x, and then we're going to take the inverse of it. We're going to talk about what that means. Okay, so if I draw it, once again, remember we're at negative pi over two, and we're going to pi over two. Quadrant four. I'm just putting a little note down here in quadrant number one. Okay, the values, remember sine goes from uh, negative one to one. So at negative pi over two, I have a value here, and then it goes up to there. I'm actually going to erase that bottom part because that became really messy. Let me redraw that, there we go. That looks better. So the graph looks like this. All right, so with inverse functions, if you remember from college algebra, you just switch the domain and range. So what is the domain becomes the range, and what's the range becomes the domain, okay? So once again, I'm just gonna write this up really quick. That graph I just drew was restricted domain of sine x. Okay, so we're looking at sine x. It's restricted, remember. So the domain of this is negative one to one, excuse me, I did the, <laughs> I did it backwards. It's a negative pi over two to pi over two. 
There it is. Okay, and the range. The range is negative 1 to 1. Okay, if I take the inverse of sine, remember this is its inverse function. So once again, what becomes the domain is the range, and what's the range becomes a domain. Okay, so the domain is now the range. So the domain is negative 1 to 1, and the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So let me say that again. If you take the inverse function of something, the domain becomes the new range, and the range becomes a new domain. So it flip-flops values. So, with that being said, we can look at the definition below and see that inverse sine, y equals inverse sine of x, and by the way, I want you to pay attention to this little notation here. That little negative one denotes that it's inverse sine. That's what that means. Okay, so it's saying that, hey, my domain has to be a value between negative 1 to 1, and my range, do you see how it says y? My range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so you're, you're looking at things backwards. In chapter 7, I said, hey, what's sine of 45 degrees? And you answered, hopefully, square root of 2 over 2. Now I'm going to say, hey, what is the inverse sine of uh, radical 2 over 2? What angle gives me that value? So inverse functions are asking you basically what angle gives you that value that you're given. Okay, so let me fill this out. Domain, once again, is negative 1 to 1. So whatever values I'm plugging in has to be a value between negative 1 to 1. And my range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Once again, it's quadrant 4 and quadrant 1. Okay, so my answers have to be in the range. So they have to be in quadrant 4 or quadrant 1. On your calculator, we have a key that looks like this. Okay, now my calculator has the sign key and then above it it says inverse sign so I have to hit the second button and then hit the sign button to get inverse sign but that inverse sign button means just as I said inverse sign so that's why we could not use it for cosecant because that's a reciprocal function okay so this means inverse sign all right let's move on so here's the graph, so it looks a, bit, a little bit nicer. Uh, as you can see, it is reflected across the line y equals x. Here's the restricted function. Uh, you know, I'll just do that in red. And here is the, the actual inverse function. We're going to do that in yellow. That's this guy here. Okay, so this is the one that we're interested in right now. All right, so just know that we had to restrict the original sine graph down because it wasn't one-to-one. -one. Once we did that, we took the reciprocal, or actually, sorry, the inverse of the function, not the reciprocal of the function. Okay, objective one, find the exact value of the inverse sine function. Let me get a good color here. Let's do blue. When we are looking for inverse sine function, we have to be careful what we are plugging into the domain. This is extremely important. That's what makes these kind of hard. Remember, we have a restricted domain and a range. So, before we even do the problem, we have to make sure the value is a value between and including negative 1 to 1. So once again, the domain, and you have to have these memorized. Uh, this is very, very important. I would suggest making flashcards with a domain and range on them. The range. It has to be a value between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. If your angle is negative, then you'll want to place it in quadrant 4. If your value is positive, you're going to want to place it in quadrant 1. Okay, so this is very, very important. Inverse sine has two two uh, quadrants, quadrant one, when your value is positive, you have to have the angle in quadrant one. When your value is negative, you have to have your answer in quadrant four.
Okay, so let's see this in action. Find the exact value of inverse sine of 1. Okay, so once again, whenever you see the inverse function, it's asking you what angle corresponds to the given value. And the given value is positive 1. Okay, if it's positive 1, uh, I got to check a couple of things before I do this, and then we got to determine what quadrant's in. So the first thing I got to do is make sure 1 is okay. When I mean that, I'm asking you, is 1 in the domain of inverse sine? And the answer is yes, because the domain, remember, is negative 1 to 1, and including those endpoints, so yeah, we're okay. All right, so once I check my value, now I have to answer the question. For these problems, you have to know your 30, 60, 90 triangle, your 45, 45, 90 triangle trig values, and you have to know the unit circle. Now, if I look at, and I, guys, there's more room on the next page, so I'm going to switch over to the next page, and we're going to draw some triangles. Okay, so... If I look at the triangles, here's 30, here's 60, and here's 90 degrees. And then I'll also draw out the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So once again, have these ready. And the unit circle. Okay, so for the unit circle, I'm just going to draw those endpoints because... Uh, you know, I can, I'm comfortable placing the triangles in whatever quadrant I need. So if you just like the unit circle, then make sure you have that out. But make sure you know how to read it. Okay, so what angle corresponds to sine? All right, if I look at my triangles, remember sine is a fraction, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. If I look at 30, 60, I have two possibilities. Either 1 over 2, opposite over hypotenuse, or uh, I have another possibility, which is radical 3 over 2. Neither one works. That's not 1. 45 degrees. Sine, once again, is opposite over hypotenuse. So that gives me 1 over radical 2 or radical 2 over 2. That doesn't work. So what I have to do is come over here to that unit circle and figure out what value works. Remember... Sine corresponds to the y value. And remember, what, this is positive. My answers for sine has to be in quadrant 1 because the range of inverse sine is, again, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So I have to have my angle in either quadrant 4 if it's negative or quadrant 1 if it's positive. And I'm talking about the values when I say positive or negative. Since my value is a positive 1, I want to be in quadrant number one. Okay, I'm looking for sine, where sine equals one in quadrant one. It's right at the end point there, it's one. Okay, that happens at pi over two. So the answer to this is inverse sine at one equals pi over two. Okay, so that is my answer. Let's move on. Find the exact value of inverse sine of negative one half. First thing I want to check is negative one half okay. So the domain of inverse sine is negative one to one. So the answer is yes. Negative one half is okay. Uh, the next question is, what quadrant does my answer have to be in? Since my range is negative pi over two to pi over two, and my answer, or my value, is negative. I want my answer, which is an angle, by the way, to be in quad 4. Okay. All right. So, uh, negative 1 half. Remember, this is opposite over hypotenuse, right? I'm just going to ignore the negative just for a moment and I'm drawing up the 30, 60, 90 triangle because that's the only triangle that has just plain 1 and just plain 2. 
So I'm going to go ahead and circle these. Now I want to know what angle will give me 1 as the opposite value and 2 as the hypotenuse. And if I look, that angle is 30 degrees. Okay? Because 30 opposite is 1, the hypotenuse is 2. So the answer is 30 degrees. In radians, that's pi over 6. But that's a quadrant 1 angle. So to place it in quadrant 4, all you have to do is stick a negative in front of it. So now I'm in quadrant 4. So the answer to this, inverse sine at negative 1 half equals negative pi over 6. Okay. So, uh, you know, so far we have been told to find the exact value. When it says that, it means don't use a calculator. But if it says to find an approximate value, you need to use your calculator. On the test, you will not have problems like this example I'm about to work out. But you will have problems like the one we just did. The one I just starred, yes, that's fair game. This one below will not be on the test, but maybe on your um, on your uh, homework there. Okay, so the first thing we got to check these values for part A. One third is a value I'm checking. It is a value between negative one to one. That's my domain of inverse sine. And I'm going to check negative one-fourth as well. Uh, that is also a value between negative one to one. So it's okay as well. So both of these are all okay. And the next question I have, uh, what quadrant are they in? Just for practice. So for part A, I'm looking at positive one-third. So my answer should be in quadrant one. And for part B, I have a negative one-fourth. That's a negative value, so that should be in quadrant number four. So for part A, I'm going to get a quadrant one angle, and for part B, and for part B, I'm going to get a quadrant four angle. Okay, how do I do this? So on my calculator, I think I mentioned this before, the, the first thing you have to do is check your mode. Your mode, put it in radians, unless it tells you to answer these in degrees. But most of the time it's radians if it doesn't say anything. Second, there is a sign key on the TI-83 that I have. If I hit the second button, which is yellow, and then I click on the sign key, that will give me inverse sign. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is do 1 divided by 3. Okay, when I plug that in, I get a value, and I'm going to round to the nearest uh, fourth place value, so I get 0.3398. Okay, part B, that was part A. For part B, I'm looking at inverse sine of negative one-fourth, so your mode should already be in radians. Once again, hit the second button if you have TI-83 or TI-84, click on the sign button, that's going to give me inverse sign. Okay? So once I have inverse sign on the calculator screen, I'm going to sh uh, touch that negative button. By the way, the negative button is right underneath the number 3. Do not use the minus button. It'll give you an error. So you do 1 divided by 4, and you plug that in. And when you plug it in, you get negative 2. Excuse me. You get point 0.2. five two seven okay all right so that's how you would do these on the calculator and this is how you get the answers i'm going to stop the video and i'm going to go ahead and, and do part two for you